Hello, and welcome to Giga Spaces Mainframe Modernization. Enterprises want to increase their performance, modernize their architecture, but mainframes are a fact. How do we bypass that? How do we increase performance? How do we build next gen architecture? Well, do you have the tools to do it? This is where we preview in five simple steps how to do those Giga Spaces. Low data to DB2 and from the DB2 to reflect it in Giga Spaces using a change data capture method where instead of actually consuming resources of the mainframe, we actually reflect the data changes based on the reader logs. Use standard analysis tools, SQL, Java, Spark, on top of Giga Spaces without consuming any extra MIPS. Visualizing everything in UI tools, BI tools, monitoring tools, persisting data to the data lake from Giga Spaces and retrieving it, and running advanced machine learning and standard algorithms on top of Giga Spaces, whereas data is actually spread between a multi-tier or intelligent multi-tier architecture between RAM, SSD, and the data lake. Data flow is from data ingestion to the mainframe, use a change data capture method to reflect the data in Giga Spaces. And in Giga Spaces, as you can see, data is tiered between RAM, SSD, and the data lake, all while the algorithms and the BI and machine learning tools are running on top of Giga Spaces. Let's move to the live demo. So now we're connected to the DB2. We don't have any data inside the DB2. We already have Giga Spaces started in the background. And as you can see here, there are zero entries in Giga Spaces. We're going to start the CVC. And we're going to feed data to DB2. And the CDC is going to make sure it is reflected in Giga Spaces. As you can see, the amount of entries is growing. I can view the space. I can see the metrics. I can even see, using Grafana, all the statistical metrics of writes, reads, and other operations. And I can even view the data. Next up, we'll be able to query the data, which was reflected from the mainframe to Giga Spaces. So using this simple query, we're going to run it. And we can visualize the data. After reflecting the changes of the data in the mainframe within Gigaspaces, data is tiered intelligently between the tiers. The past hours, days, can sit on RAM. The past weeks or months will persist on the SSD. And the recent years or all the rest of the data will sit on the data lake. You can use standard tools, standard APIs. You can use monitoring tools like Grafana and BI tools, SQL editors. And for the sake of this demo, we'll use Zeppelin, which is a very nice way, a notebook to represent data and run dynamic queries on top of the data. In this notebook, we'll show a value at risk scenario. So obviously we have to define the model so we'll know what exactly are we querying. We're gonna actually create a context so we can connect with the data. We're gonna define, this is a predefined a lambda policy, which basically means that any data older than January 1st, 2018, is actually located on the data lake. This way, we can run any type of query without actually defining which tier we need to access. If it's the recent days, weeks, which is stored in the RAM, if it's the past few months on the SSD, or if it's years of historical data, which might sit on the batch layer on the data lake. 
In this query, since we're querying data which is newer than January 1st, 2018, we're only accessing the speed layer. If we're querying data which is older, then we'll only access the batch layer. However, if we access data which is sitting on all the tiers, RAM, SSD, and data lake, Gigaspaces will access all the tiers, retrieve it, merge it, and produce a single result back to the user. So now, when actually running your algorithms, whether it's Monte Carlo, historical simulations, you shouldn't be minded of where the data is. That's part of the architecture of the application, not part of the business logic. The business logic should focus purely on the business aspect. And as you can see here in the code, nowhere in the code we are defining where the data is located. So if we want to change the tiering and add another year to the historical simulation so we can test for four years instead of three years, it's really a matter of going back to this Lambda policy definition, changing the definition in runtime, and that's it. Previewing portfolio balance or simulations uh, for the next 100 days or visualizing portfolios, sure, that's an easy task. This is exactly what the notebooks are for.